In this Arduino tutorial I'm going to explain two Arduino scripts, one script to turn a LED on and off and another script to do the same but then to remember the state of the LED. Okay, here you see the on off example. When I press the button the LED goes on and when I release the button the LED goes off. Then I'm going to show the state change because when I press a button I want to remember its state. So I press one time and you see the LED stays on and if I press another time the LED goes off and stays off. In this case you can control with one simple button different states in a program. Okay, let's start with a simple on off example. An Arduino program always consists of two functions setup and a function called loop. But before I start writing a program, I start to declare some variables. In this case, I have connected a button to a digital I.O. pin number two, and I've connected the LED, actually that's a LED that's already on the Arduino board, and that's connected to I.O. pin 13. And I have a variable button state, and I make the variable zero. And in the setup, I have to say which I.O. pin is an input and which I.O. pin is an output. In this case, the button pin, pin number two, is an input because I want to connect a sensor to it. And the LED pin is an output because I've connected an actuator to it. And this is only run once, only when you start up the Arduino. Then the actual program, I'm going to write in the loop. And the on-off example is really simple. It's actually two lines of code. First, I'm going to read the I.O. pin number two, and I'm going to check if it's zero or one. So in this case, if I press the button, the button state is one. If I release the button, the button state is zero. And the only thing I have to do then is to write that button state value to pin number 13. So I'm going to write 0, then the light is off, and if I write a 1, the LED is on. Well, that's it. Okay, now I want to explain the state change, and I start with the same code as in the previous example, only I'm going to add two variables more. Last button state and LED state. And in the loop we will see what we are going to do. Well, the first thing in the loop I, what I would do is to read the push button and to save that in the button state. But what I want to do is actually to check when a button is pressed or when it's actually released. So when it went from on to off or from off to on. And I can do that by a state change detection. I compare the current button state with the last button state. And if they are not equal, then the condition is true. So in this case, when the button state is 1 and the last button state is 0, the condition is true. But also when the button state is 0 and the last button state is 1, it's true as well. And to make this condition work, I have to store the last button state with the current button state. I only want to do something when I press the button, so not when I release the button. So I check if the button is pressed, so that is when button state is 1. If I want to check if the button is released, I have to check if button state is equal to zero. And if the button state is equal to one, I want to change the state of the variable. In this case, the variable let state. And if the let state is equal to one, I'm going to make the let state zero. And otherwise, I'm going to make the let state one. And finally, I'm going to use that let state variable to make the LED turn on or to make the LED turn off. So pin 13 goes on when the LED state is 1 and goes off when the LED state is 0. And the final thing I add is a delay of 20 milliseconds for debouncing purposes and 
well, to see actually what that means and what it does, the best thing is that you can remove the delay and then you see why you need the delay in the example. Okay, one final thing I want to show. Instead of changing a let state from 0 to 1, I can also work with a counter. In this case, I call it a state num. And every time I press the button, the counter counts up one more. So this actually says state number is state number plus one. And this is a short way to write that with plus plus. And in that way, I can use more states in my program than only on and off. Okay, and to limit the state number, I can use an if statement. In this case, I'm going to check if the state number gets bigger than one. And if that's true, I'm going to set it back to zero. So this example only has two states, zero and one. But if I want to make three states, for example, I can change this one to bigger than two. So in that case, the state number starts with zero. It can get one, it can get two, but if it gets three, it's set back to zero again. And later in my program, I can use those three states to control different functionalities in my program.